So this is just a video response to Phuket Word's latest video, just asking pilots if we have to compensate for the additional distance when flying at altitude due to the increased radius compared to traveling across the surface of the Earth. Now I have discussed this with you previously and I've gone through the math previously, but I'm happy to repeat it in a video this time. The demonstration here is using a ball with a number of straws. Now I appreciate you have said this is not to scale, but let's consider what it actually would look like on this scale. Those straws would have to be less than half a millimeter in height. Now how much is half a millimeter? It's smaller than the ball in this ballpoint pen. Okay, so this diagram, and I respect you said it's not to scale, but in reality it's grossly out of scale. Okay, remember we're just half a millimetre above the surface of this ball if we were doing it to scale. So let's take a look at how much the difference in distance actually is. Let's have a look at the math. And we're assuming the Earth is 6371 kilometres radius, which will give us a circumference of 40,030 kilometres. Now, going up to 40,000 feet, that is an altitude increase of 12 kilometers. The radius of the aircraft flight path is therefore 6371 plus 12, which gives us 6383 kilometers. That makes the circumference of the circle that the aircraft is flying to be 40,106 kilometers. So what's the difference as a percentage? We need to divide 40,106 by 40,030 and it gives us that number of 1.0019. That means the distance increase at 40,000 feet compared to the surface of the Earth increases by 0.19%. So what does that actually mean? Let's take a flight from, say, Sydney to Hawaii. That's a flight I did recently, and it's about 4,000 miles. I'm just rounding to the nearest number there just to make it simple. Over that distance, the increase in the distance of the actual route due to the altitude is only seven miles. So in 4,000 miles of flying, it's only an increase of seven miles. What does that mean in terms of time? If the flight duration is 10 hours, the actual difference in time is one minute. So in reality, yes, there is an increase in the distance and there is an increase in the time, but it's so tiny that you actually wouldn't even have to factor it in and you would still arrive within one minute of the estimated flight time. However, just to go one step further, if you go to Wikipedia and you look up flight planning and then scroll down to the section that says units of measurement and read what it says about how flight plans are calculated and how they calculate the distance units. It says, distances are always measured in nautical miles as calculated at a height of 32,000 feet. So the distances are factoring in the actual cruise altitude of the aircraft. And 32,000 feet, it's sort of the, the lower level of typical airline flights, but um, it's factoring in enough of an adjustment to remove that 0.19% error down to less than probably 0.1 for most of the altitudes that airlines are going to fly. And that means even over a 10 hour international route, the difference is going to be less than one minute. And then it goes on to say, with due allowance for the fact that the earth is an oblate spheroid rather than a perfect sphere. So to answer your question, yes, we do factor in the additional distance. It's less than a minute on a 10 hour flight from Sydney to Hawaii and it is factored into the flight plans. So hopefully that answers your question.